BMX time. BMX boys have a lot of fun. 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 As well as Britain's Tim March, the current number one and many more brilliant bikers. Well, apart from the clashes on the track, we're going to be showing you the best freestylers in action. And we're going to have Andy Ruffle along as well to give us a look at how the professionals perform. And talking of the professionals, they're actually out to win £15,000 worth of prize money over the next six weeks. OK, then, let's meet the, uh, the team captains for this uh, BMX event. And don't forget, if you're going to be following the action over the next six weeks, watch out for the very important team colours. Andy Ruffle, captain of the white team. And he's been British number one for the last three years. Hello, my name's Tim March and I'm captain of the gold team. And a smiling Tim March is European champion. Now each week Andy's going to give a special race tip. Here's number one. OK, well on the track you'll find a number of banked corners. Now they're called berms with an M. Now the idea is to get straight to the inside of that turn because if someone's behind you and you take it wide then somebody's going to come on the inside of you. As you can see Pete is coming right close to the inside of that tyre. Now if someone was behind him then no one would be able to get past because he's got the shortest line round the turn. Right, that's basic tip yeah? That's right, for all the turns on the track including the first turn always stick to the inside. Right, for more ruffle race tips watch next week. It's a super class. These are the top boys coming up. Tim, how are you feeling? Good, real yeah. good, yeah. You understand you've got a different bike? Yeah, that's okay, I'm used to it though. Yeah, what happened to the other one? It got, fork spent got on it when we lent it to another team rider. He had a crash and wiped out. Right, so you're happy about this one? Yeah, okay, it's what I've got to make do with what I've got. Lining up uh, in the super class event is Tony Slater on the extreme right for the blue team. And next to him, from France, Claude Villemont for the silver team. And our own Andy Ruffles uh, rides the white team as their team captain. Next is uh, Chris Simmons for the red team. Pete Middleton rides for the yellow team. Tony Hire represents the black team. And big Trev Robinson, number two in the UK last year, is the green team. Whilst leading the gold team is Tim Marsh, European number one. There goes the lights and they're off. It looks like Ruffles has got a very good lead. Ruffles in the lead, he's got a very clear lead now. They hit that first burn. There's trouble in the main bunch, but he's out of the trouble and clear away. But the challenge is coming from behind as big Trevor Robinson tries to close the gap, and it's over the wall of jump. Well, Ruffles is well out in the lead. Behind him, there's a challenge coming up. As Zulman tries to get inside, uh, Big Trev Robinson and succeeds on that burn. Drop well clear inside him. But Ruffle is out in front and Vilman has got a lot of ground to make up. Over the whoops. And it's Andy Ruffle first for Team White. Claude Vilman for Team Silver in second and Big Trev Robinson takes third place for the green team. That's a good race. Very excited over the far side. Very. Can hardly speak here, look. Get his out. Oh. It, that was hairy. Okay, How much is it actually? What actually does it take out of you out there? I mean, what, are you actually, what energy are you using? Mental as well as physical. When you're on the gate, you've got seven other riders concentrating to get out that gate. I've never seen so much like concentration up there. I mean, you were really mm, watching that light. So you've got to be psyched and you've got to concentrate because there's so much competition. As soon as that gate drops, you've got to go. I'll tell you what, you couldn't really lose that one, could you? Well, I had a good go. I would have been, I would have been winding you up rotten if you'd lost that. I know. <laughs> Whew, but that was a good race. I'm very pleased. And let's hope one carry on. Good stuff. Whew. Well done, Andy. One main to go. Just look at the points. Right, that's about it. The excitement's over for Hounslow. Five more events still to come. Andy Boy showed us how good he was. He won his race. Yep, just about. <laughs> and uh, of course, next week at uh, Wigan, there's going to be quite a few surprises in store actually on the track. Have you raced Wigan before? Yes, I have. It's going to be a lot of exciting racing, that's for sure. Right, well, the excitement's still going on here. Catch us next Monday night, Channel 4, for more BMX. In. Now, Star Wars may have Chewbacca, but BMX Track Wars have got King Kong. Here's Mick Brown to tell you all about him. Hi, welcome to Sunny Wigan, home of King Kong, but not that King Kong, whoa, this King Kong, this is one of the biggest jumps in the country and it's the venue for round two of the Kellogg's BMX Championships. Okay BMX fans, this is how the score stands after round one of Track Wars last week. 
Eric Rube's red team are out in the lead, Tim March's gold team next, and the whites, led by our very own Andy Ruffle, move up into third place after that amazing ride in the superclass at Hounslow. Remember, Andy led from start to finish and was really flying. Right, that's the scores so far. I'll just tell you how the uh, scoring works. You get eight points for a win, seven for second, six for third, right the way down for one if you come last. Anyway, enough of the chat. Let's get on with the action. Gold team captain Tim March, one of the tallest riders. How tall are you? Six foot five. Wow. Do you find you obviously don't find it difficult to, to ride these bikes? How, what about when you started? No, um, I, I kind of find it a little bit hard to start with because there weren't it? any products in England that um, could have made it easier for me to ride a bike like a taller seat post or wider handlebars. Right. But now there are, so I find it easy to ride. And you've uh, ridden before. You've done the, the uh, motorised version of bikes. Yeah, right? I used to race motocross, racing for Honda. And what happened there? Well, um, I came second in the British Championship 125 series, and after that, um, they dropped their sponsorship series apart from the world champion, Graham Noyce, and I got dropped along with another rider, and I had to buy some bikes, and in the end, I couldn't afford to keep racing. It was costing too much money. Right, time for another Andy Ruffle race tip. Last week, we looked at berms taking the corners. This week, what you got for us, Andy? Well, this week, we're looking at speed jumps. Now, you'll find them on all tracks. The idea is, you know, you've got to remember the first rule of BMX which is when you're in the air, you're losing speed. Yeah. So you've got to get over that jump and keep pedaling right the way through. Now, as you can see here, I approach the jump, and then a couple of feet before the jump, you do a slight wheelie. You lift your front wheel up, then place the front wheel down just the other side, but keep pedaling right the way through. It takes a fair bit of practice, but once you get it wired, it is the fastest way to take the jump. Right, Ruffles race tip number two. OK, here we go, UK Superclass. Got uh, Alan Woods here. Alan, you actually designed this track. That's correct, yes. So you're going to be all right. Well, I designed the track about two years ago. The surface isn't perfect, but you know, I hope to do well. And what kind of draw do you reckon you've got coming out of this lane? Well, lane one's pretty good if you have to get a very, very good start to get to the first jump ahead. Otherwise, all the riders come across on you and you've got no chance, so I'm hoping to get a good start. Well, if anyone should get a good start, you should have, because you've had a lot of practice on it. Good luck. Good luck Thank to you. everyone here, boys. Now for the super class, and Alan Woods riding for the black team on the right. Next to him, for the gold team, that's Tim March, Europeans number one. And from France, uh, for the green team, Jean-Francois Lally, who is the number two in France. For the silver team, it's Claude Villemont, three years he's been number one. Alongside him, for the yellow team, that's Peter Middleton. And for the white team, Andy Ruffle, again three times number one. For the red team, that's Chris Simmons. And out of the extreme left for the blue team, Tony Slater. A lot of very tough bike riders in this one now. This time then, Pino's ready, Pino's ready, go! Who's going to get that hole shot as they clear away in fine style and it looks like March, yes. March has got the lead, Tim March has done the lead. Andy Ruffles in second place, Tim March is in the lead. Andy Ruffles dropped back into second. Tim March looks good but Ruffles come up on the inside. Ruffles came on the inside then, caught him napping. But they go towards King Kong and fly over the top. Oh, they're shoulder to shoulder coming out of that first berm. And March has got clear up in the inside of him now. Ruffle has got a challenge. Tim March puts his wheel down, clears the berm and goes round now. With March, oh, it's going away as Ruffle had all sorts of problems to stay with it. Well, 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 well. So Tim March for gold came in first. Pete Middleton yellow second. Alan Woods for black team was third. And a very disconsolate Andy Ruffle has to settle for just one point. Well done. Thank you very much. How was it? It was hard race, but it was paid off. That was an amazing duel between you and Andy Ruffle. Yeah, he had a good drive coming out of the second turn, but I used my head and concentrated on thinking about where I could take him on the rest of the track. That was incredible. That's one of the, I think, one of the best races we've seen so far. Well done. Thank you. Right, I think I'd better go and try and find Andy. But boy, he looks pretty angry after that crash. They're going to be mad. That's what I can say. Yeah? Was it yeah. cut-up job? Take-out job. That's what I was. Wipe well, out. That's BMX racing, you know, I mean, I'll be back for the next one. That's what it's all about. It was a great race, great duel between you and Tim. That's right, I was sure I had it. I could have took him out on that turn. As we can see here, Andy, here he comes, Pete Middleton, right up the back, and oh, there you go. Oh, dear. Still one point for the whites. <laughs> they all add up, you know. <laughs> one point, yeah. But it was good, you know, it's good fun. And, uh, it's great fun. Poor old Andy, he won't forget.
get that for some time. OK, we leave Wigan in the spot where Andy Ruffle came to grief. Hope That's you right. can uh, sort it out for next week. So do I. Now, we're off to Birmingham next week, and that is a real special track. Yes, it's a very big, fast track, and there's going to be some very exciting racing. OK, then, BMX lovers, if you love BMX, same BMX time, same BMX channel next week. Welcome to Birmingham for round three of the Kellogg's BMX Track Wars Tournament. We've actually got a custom-built track this week, completely built for the Kellogg's Tournament. It's big, it's bold, and it really is fast and furious. Here's how the teams are at the moment, point-wise. Uh, in the lead is uh, Tim March, the gold team. They're leading uh, Eric Root's red team, and that was because of two incredible incidents last week in Wigan. You may remember Tim was involved in an amazing race with Andy Ruffle, he beat him there, and in the US Pro class, uh, Eric Root was completely wiped out, and that made Tim take the lead. Well, this is a specially designed track here in Birmingham, but that starting straight is very short indeed. A pretty tricky ride. Okay, right, it's time for Ruffle's race tip number three. What are we up to this week, Andy? Okay, then, Mick, we're at the start. Now, the start, without a doubt, is the most important part of the race. Now, as you can see, when Pete's set up, he's got his front wheel pushing really hard up against that gate, and he's balancing on two pedals. That's the quickest way to get out the gate. Right. Now, he's got his, bo his body centred over the bike. Now, all his weight is on the right foot. Now, as soon as that gate starts to move, he's going to be watching the lights and the gate at the same time, which is pretty impossible. And now, is it, is it important to keep both wheels on the ground as you come out, or can you sort of like wheelie out? Definitely. If you wheelie, then you're losing speed. Right. OK, shall we see Pete in action? Here we go. OK. As you can see there, Mick, he kept his front wheel right on the gate as it went down. That's quite a good start. You must get out the gate first, because if you get out the gate fourth or fifth, you've got a lot of work to do to come to first. Right, Ruffles race tip number three. So here are the points after two races today. The Blues in the lead, so perhaps they've been listening to Andy's starting tips. Well now, they're up on the line for the Superclass, and our Andy just can't wait. On the inside gate for the Blue team, we have Tony Slater. And next to him for the silver team, that's Claude Villemont, three times French champion. And here's another champion, the European man himself, and that's the gold team leader, Tim March. For the red team, we have a local rider, Anthony Budd, who comes from Bromsgrove. And from further afield, the green team, we've got uh, Jean-Francois Lally, who's been uh, France number two for a couple of years now. And he's got on his right the black team rider, Alan Woods, who's the UK number six. For the white team, there's our Andy, Andy Ruffle. Three times he's been number one. And out there on the extreme left is the yellow team rider, Pete Middleton. Well, they've got the bad gates over on the left, and they've got some work to do. Okay, the race. The race. okay guys, get ready. Good luck to all of you. This has got to be some final. Set them up and good luck. On the extreme left of the gate, this is where What's you've really got to put the pressure down. But March it is that makes the whole shot. Oh, problems behind him, and March still leads. Into second place drops to Claude Villemont, the Frenchman in second. Over those trail whoops, March takes them cleanly, so Tim March stays in first place. Claude Villemont coming up in second uh, with Pete Middleton for third place. In the finish line, there's a good challenge there by Claude Vilmont. But on the line, it looks to me, yes, that's it is. It is March who stays clear. Tim March for the gold team first, Claude Vilmont for silver in second place, and Pete Milton was third for yellow. Tim March, win number two. Yeah, thank you. That was a, you got really at uh, the uh, start very quickly. Yeah, I was kind of practicing my, a lot of the time as most I could yeah. at the start of the day. So. And how are you approaching this sort of, like first burn? Because it really is causing lots of aggravation. Yeah, well... I just kind of went in and just hoped for the best, really, just hope no one hit me. And you were nearly caught near the end? Yeah, well, that's, that's racing anyway. I just played it safe, so didn't make any mistakes and just wound up first. So more points for the Golds? That's it, we're going to win. Well, not today, you're not. With one race to go, the Golds can't quite catch the runaway blues. But poor old Andy was really caught up in that traffic jam. Look at that. I don't know, I'm going home. I'm riding like a, riding like a wet lettuce. I've never raced as bad in my life. Well, I mean, that's so, surely that's just how it goes. I mean, if you're not out the, um, the start quick enough, you're, you've had it. Yeah, you know, it's a very difficult first turn. I mean, everybody bunches up and slides out. Um, it's just the right way the race went, but uh, I went for it and just didn't get it. Always the next time. So this is how they finish at Birmingham. Andy Patterson's blue team have led from start to finish, and the goals have come up to second place. OK, it's the end of week three. We've been here in Birmingham. We've had a great day. Andy's uh, 
not had such a good day though, we'll talk about that in a minute. I'll give you the, uh, the results so far as they stand after three weeks. The Golds, captained by UK's Tim March, lead with 126 points. The Reds and the Blues tie for second place. Andy, not so good for you though. Well, you know, it's uh, it's been fun, that's the main thing, and there uh, have been some really exciting races, so let's hope it's just as good for the next one. Well, listen, it was so good here this week, we've decided that we're going to keep the caravan here, all the info, all the people are all going to stay here, and we're going to give you another go next week. How about that? Well, that's really good. I like this track, so it should be good. Hi, BMX fans, and welcome to round four of our BMX Kellogg's Track Wars Competition. It all happened last week in Birmingham, didn't it? And we're back here today because it's so exciting here, a custom-built track with one controversial berm, the one that caused all the problems last week. We've actually put another berm in, we've put some speed jumps in. It's going to be even more exciting this week and it really is going to test our superstar BMX riders. Well, despite two wins in a row for the Reds, they're still down in fifth place, with the blue and white teams just swapping positions at the top there again. Yellow and green don't move and neither does black, still at the bottom. OK, it's time for our fourth uh, raffle race tip. This week, Andy, what's it going to be? Well, we're at a very difficult part of the track. Triple whoops, would you believe? Ooh. There are mainly three humps, as you can see over there. Yep. And there's two ways to do it. We're going to get Eric Roop to uh, demonstrate one way, which is riding through them. OK, as you can see, he's over the first two and then rode the third one. Right. It's quite difficult, but with, bit, with practice, you can get it. But would you use that kind of style in a race? Um, if you had a slow, if you was going slow, say in fourth or fifth place, that's the sort of technique you'd use. But if you're in front and you're going for it, then you'd do what Nelson Channard is going to demonstrate now, which is to fly all three of them. How fast would he be going at this point? Uh, well, on a track like this, maybe 25, maybe 30 miles There he away. goes. Ooh. And as you can see, cleared the whole three of them. And what's the technique? Just to sort of like get up there and... That's right. <laughs> Hope for the best. <laughs> what happens if you get halfway and you find that, you know, it's not quite going to be the landing you expect? Uh, well, you have to control it, you know. You have to, um, with practice and once you've done it a few times, you can't worry. You just have to jump them and, and uh, hope you can land on the downside of the third one. OK, well, that's Andy Ruffles race tip number four. It's the superclass and let's hope that Andy's going to follow his own advice. The gold team, that's Tim March. For the white team, Andy Ruffle. Black team, Chris Simmon. And for the silver team, the French physic, Claude Villemont. For the red team, Trevor Robinson. And for the blue team, Jean-Francois Lally. And the green team, Jamie Vince. And the yellow team, on the extreme left of the gate, that's Pete Middleton. Set him up the rain has really turned this track into a crest to run. Watch the lights! And that first bend is all important. And Trevor Robinson made a good start in the middle, but he stood out. And, oh, he's been T-boned by uh, Simmons. Chris Simmons has bumped into him. And March is well in the lead now good threesome behind him though as uh, Jean-Francois Lally together with Jamie Vince and Andy Ruffle are chasing after Tim March it's Ruffle back in fourth place and March in the lead he looks really comfortable and full of power and he's a man in a hurry because behind him these three riders are bunching up as uh, Lally stubs his foot down Jamie Vince in third place and Ruffle still back in fourth so Tim Marsh heads for maximum points to the goal team. John Francois Lolly for blue second and Jamie Vince for green third. It was so slippery, it, no, everybody lost control, even me. It was slippery. And how did you find the, uh, the whoops over there in that? Well, I just dodged a little bit to the right, just so I didn't make a mistake because it was wet, because I don't want to go fly, flying off when I'm in the lead. So that's 24 points you've massed for the, uh, yeah. the gold team? Yeah, that's for sure. It's good stuff. Tim March was in gate one, so he could get the whole shot and keep out of trouble in that first turn. But what a pile up with the rest of the riders, including me. As you can see, in weather like this, the track gets pretty slippery. This week's winners are Andy Patterson's blue team, which means at the end of round four, the blues have taken first position away from the golds with the whites hot on their tail. Oh, and here come the boys. It's. Uh... Week five, and it's time for Andy Ruffles' race tip number five. Andy, what's it to be this week? OK, well, this week we're going to talk about how to improve your position if you get a bad start. What do you think, Harry? Well, the best, the best way to overcome a bad start is to uh, figure out what your competition's doing ahead of you, whether they're going to use the outside of the first turn or if they're all going to go down low into the first turn. And if they're all going down low, you want to drift to the outside and cut back and kind of use the outside-inside technique passing. A good example of that could have been at Birmingham the other week when everyone seemed to get held up at the first berm and the person who was at last out the trap right. had a chance to get around the back. Yeah, what a lot of guys were doing there was hanging back if they got a bad start, hanging right back behind them, letting everybody go into the inside, 
cutting round on the outside and therefore getting into second or third, maybe even first place. Right, gotcha. And uh, what other kind of things should we be looking out for on the track, you know, general practice? Uh, well, basically how you take the jumps. If you're in a tight bunch, then you have to watch how you take the jumps because if you take them wrong, then you could take a couple of riders down with you. So you have to be very careful. This track in particular, these two big doubles right here that we're sitting on, if you do get a bad start, um, you don't have enough speed to get over them. You have to kind of roll them, which then, then you lose about another three bike lengths. And any other tips on general track behavior that you can think of? Well, one more thing we're going to cover is uh, something that you shouldn't do in a race. Uh, when you're coming into a turn, is do what's called a T-bone. And uh, that's where one rider comes right up on the inside and rides you out the turn. But that is definitely out of order, is it? That is out of order. That you shouldn't do in a BMX race. Oh, take a look at this, look. Andy Ruffle in full flight, sweeping around the berm. Right, got an interesting story here before we get to the UK, big boys. Sid Salisbury. First of all, Sid is not your real name, is it? No, it's not. It's Mark Salisbury, really. Right. And uh, you're, you're riding a borrowed bike? Yeah, well, uh, like last night at the hotel, uh, the car was broken into and mine and my friend's bike was stolen. So oh. I'm riding a borrowed bike. It's definitely out of order, they're nicking someone's bike. You're riding uh, in your first final now? First final, yeah. I've I've had a bit of bad luck and I haven't been riding that well, like, but uh, I'm going out for revenge today. And I'm unfortunately, gonna... though, I think by all accounts, the outside line is going to be the hardest. Well, definitely, because you've got a soft line to the first jump, so that's going to slice up a bit, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Finally, are you jumping or riding the first jump? I'm going to jump it. Right, good luck with it. OK, thanks. It's the Superclass up on the gate, and the man who's just cleaned the track, uh, Andy Ruffle, is on the left-hand side there riding for the white team. Next him, Tony Slater for the green team, and Chris Simmons rides for the black team. Alan Woods for the silver team, sensibly keeping his uh, uh, anorak on for a bit longer, as does Pete Middleton for the yellow team. Tim Marsh is next to him, that's the gold team rider who's the European champion. And we've got Trevor Robinson, big Trev for the red team. And out on the extreme right, Mark City Solby for the blue team. Well, that's it. So they're actually getting their pedals Watch in the right eyes. position on the wheel against that gate because they've such a big surge for the start of that double cavalry jump. And City Souls, we made a bad start indeed. They'll go over shoulder to shoulder. It's Middleton who drops it in, in no uncertain terms. But it's March that's gone into the lead. Tim March leads round that second berm, being chased by Andy Ruffle. Heading towards the third berm now. And he slides out. It's March that's gone. And straight into him went Andy Ruffle. Andy Ruffle's off and running. So's Tim March. Oh, and Trevor Robinson's taking it, sitting down. And all sorts of problems there, but it's Alan Woods that's gone clear into the lead. And look who's in second place. Bowl City Salisbury's worked his way through from the back to the front, but out in the lead, hitting the line for first. It's Alan Woods for the silver team. Mark Salisbury slides into second for the blue team. Chris Simmons third for black. Alan Woods, good victory there, although there was a bit of uh, confusion in front. That's right, the track's very tight and you've just got to be quick. The track surface is very loose, and if there's a gap, you just got to go for it. How about your start? You get a good start? Not really. I was got a bad start, but I was able to pick off the line to get past people. Right. Some more drama here. Got Trevor Robinson. Trevor, you were involved with that um, pile up there with Tim March. Tell us your story. I was in third place coming round. Tim washed out, and he went into him. And then I looked for the gap in between them to get him. Just as I was coming up on top of the tabletop, somebody caught me again, and I went down. <laughs> A dejected Pete Middleton who fell on the first jump. One race yet to go and the Greens are still out in front with the rest of them evenly spaced, not far behind. At the end of week five and yet more incredible BMX track riding and of course action from the freestylers. Well, I don't know about you, but I do like this place up here. I think it's quite good. I think next week we'll have to uh, stay here and change the track around a bit. That's the, that's the plan. What's going to happen next week is they're going to slightly change the track around, make it a little bit more hard for the big boys. But uh, we feel that it's going to be so exciting. You just better be watching next week on uh, Channel 4 for BMX bike riding at its very best. Well, now it's time for our final Ruffles race tip. And this could be the most important one of all. And gang, it's no use uh, looking smart in all your new gear if your bike's not going to be up to scratch at the race. Uh, Andy Ruffle, you just had to go around the track and you're going to what, make a few changes? Well, yes, yeah, so I've been around once uh, just to test out the track and also see if my gearing was right. Yep. Um, you know, I've now found out that the gearing was wrong. I was using a bit too easy, 43.16. So I'm going to change the front uh, chainring to a 44, which makes it that much harder to pedal, just a fraction harder. OK, Andy, well, give us some uh, a few tips then that some of the gang can... Uh take note of. Okay well before you go up to the race I mean you're checking for like the headset which is this piece down here you're making sure that that is tight so that's not going to give you no hassle when you go out start gate. Um, you also make sure that your chain rings are tight your pedals tight you haven't got excessive movement in the cranks 
Um, your back wheel is tight, especially your back wheel, because as you're putting the pressure on the pedals, then that back wheel can move. And how long should you, you take on that? Well, about 10 minutes. Right, you shouldn't sort of like make it, try and do it in two minutes. Definitely not, definitely not, because, right. you know, the bike is the most important part of the race. Well, you're uh, getting your bike ready now, you're racing very soon. Yeah. And don't forget, gang, if you're into your BMX bikes, it's no good looking good and your bike falling to bits. Make sure you do your job well, and I'm sure it'll improve your racing. Let's go racing again, it's the Superclass. Over to you, David Duffield. In gate number one, Andy Ruffell for the white team. Doesn't look very happy with uh, the line out of his uh, start position. Tony Slater for the green team, concentrating hard, as is Tim March for the gold team. Jamie Vince rides for the silver team. And for the blue team, that's Mark Salisbury. Red team rider is Trevor Robinson. And for the black team, Chris Simmons. On the extreme right-hand side of the gate, Pete Middleton rides for the yellow team, and off the gate they go! And they all come together, the shoulders banging under, Ruffle is off his bike, and Tim Marsh is way back in seventh place, but it's Robinson that's gone into the lead, over that stagger whoops. Robinson, Mr Muscles himself, he's a very powerful rider, this Birmingham Wheels boy, took that tabletop in fine style, but City Solvies cut the gap back. But these two, by the sheer speed, have opened up an enormous lead now, and they're going to fight it out on the uphill section, and this is where the man from Birmingham, Trevor Robinson, is going to use all his strength because he pulls big weights to get himself in good fitness. He safely rides over that camel jump, deciding to keep the wheels on the deck. They've got the longer part of the course ahead of them now, and over the stagger boots for the second time. Still Trevor Robinson in the lead. Salisbury's beginning to close up now. Smooth pedaling style as Salisbury tries to close the gap, but no problem for Trevor Robinson to take first place to the red team. Mark Salisbury second for blue, and Jamie Vince third for silver. Yeah, quite there. Yeah. He can hardly speak. He's just won in uh, the UK Superclass Group. You must be happy about that one. Yeah. Tell us about it. Talk us through. Well, I got the gate. I just let it from there. And you were going like it. Yeah. Did you see Andy at the start? He came down and, and completely lost his pedal. We'll try and get no. a word with him very soon. Well, Andy really had trouble at the start. I think his pedal has completely come off. No, the threads have just gone on the pedal, and as I accelerated out, the, the pedal came straight out. I just. I can't believe it. Well, that sounds incredible because only earlier on we were talking about bike maintenance, about the fact that it's got to be ready to go. It's incredible, you know, te for 10 minutes I've been tuning the bike up and getting it ready and then something like that happens. Was that overlooked or did you check that? No way, no. The, the threads had just gone on the pedal and as I accelerated it came out. Everything was fine when I got up on that. I, oh, it's incredible. No, nothing like this has ever happened to me before. This is absolutely crazy. <laughs> But the gold team are the Kellogg's BMX Championship winners, but only three points from Andy Patterson's Blues and the Whites, led by our very own Andy, close behind. Well done, Tim March. Well, here I am surrounded by the two giants, if I can say that, of British BMX. We've had the Americans here, but these two boys really do fly the flag for England and Great Britain. Tim, a great performance personally from you, but also by your gold team. Yeah, we, the whole thing went very, very well, you know. I can't, I can't just take the credit myself for the gold team because everybody put in 100% on that team, so it was a complete team effort. And uh, Andy, you'll no doubt be back. Well, definitely, yes. My team's done really well. I'm really pleased the way everybody's rode and uh, had a fantastic time, so uh, look forward to the next series. And uh, good luck in what you're doing in the future. Thank you very much. And, uh, well, if you've enjoyed our presentation of the BMX half as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you, then it's all been worthwhile. So, goodbye, gang, and I, for one, will remember this series for a long, long time. Battles ready, go, go, go. Riders ready, battles ready, go, go, go. The bike banged into my shin, and it just made your pain. Once you get the bug, you're gonna... Because I'm a show-off. Four to five, three, sixty times, and even buddy, I'm... It's your bell. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was a Mason. Better. I didn't like wet letters. I've never raced a bad in my life. I just uh, praise the Lord for everything. I just attribute that all to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bye BMXers, see you next time. The bike banged into my shin and it just made your pain.